Hi guys, my name is Teague. I'm a visual effects artist, and I was just working on a show where a guy wanted to take some 2002-2003 mini DV footage, like you see before you, and turn it into like 1992-1993 VHS footage that's been around that long, not new 1992 VHS footage, but as if we had just pulled out a tape from 25 years ago, complete with demagnetiz demagnetization and color offsets and everything. Um, and this is a project that lets you do that. So before we get started, this will be the beginning, and this is where the end is going to be. And this is entirely controlled inside of After Effects with basic sliders that you can control individual parameters with. Uh, and you'll be off to the races 45 seconds after loading the project. Uh, but let's go through the whole thing and tell you how to get there. So I'm just going to go ahead and revert. Yes, please. Okay. So the way this works is... A bit up. Uh, I just have this piece of footage here. Uh, it's just some MMA guys fighting in uh, 2003, something like that with different color values and color temperatures and brightness values, just, you know, uh, sort of around the uh, around the spectrum of what you might get VHS footage stuff. Um, and it is in NTSC. You can use any size footage in this project, but the first step is to scale it down to VHS size, which is part and parcel of the VHS thing. It's going to get kind of blurry. Uh, but we're just going to bring that into the input comp. There's a comp labeled input. Um, uh, I'm going to mute it, but when you don't mute it, uh, if you were to leave it unmuted, it's going to get, this piece of footage is going to get duplicated and a bunch of stuff is going to happen under the hood a million times from, from tomorrow, but it will only carry one version of the audio with it. So you don't actually have to worry about that. By the time it gets to the final output comp, there's just one instance of audio, so it won't blare out your, your speakers or anything like that. But I'm going to mute it because otherwise we'd hear it, so whatever. Now, when you go into comp 7, which is output, uh, it comes with this little guide layer that has basically instructions for all of the effects, but it's, you know, I turned that off, but it's there for you. Uh, and when you click on this null, it doesn't do anything except give you all the sliders. Uh, all, all the effects are uh, tied to sliders on this null. We're just going to go ahead and select all of them and zero them out so I can tell you about them individually. Um, this is entirely procedurally driven in After Effects. You don't have to have any third-party plugins. You don't have to have any renders or any footage or anything like that. Uh, it's entirely run off of stuff that's built in After Effects CS6. It might work in CS5.5 with the exception of one thing, but we'll get to that later. The only thing that I actually have pre-rendered, and I pre-rendered it just for speed, is um, this guy right here, which this doesn't represent anything that you'll ever see in the comp. It's actually used as a utility to drive effects, uh, but it's got that sort of perfect scary wobbly VHS thing going on all over it, not to mention incredible amounts of color weirdness, but that's all stuff that's getting piped into an effect somewhere. It's not getting comped on top. Uh, so let's go back to a comp here. So we'll take uh, this frame right here. Let me go ahead and just plop that guy down. Okay, so I'm just going to kind of go through these in random order. Gnarly Scan takes part of what I just showed you and overlays that just a bit to kind of give you this... Um, sort of the very beginning of my VHS tape sucks effect. Uh, I tend to dial this one in first, but that's just me. You know, that's the way I tend to look at it. So, you know, all of these effects, none of them are simple uh, effects. None of, them, none of these sliders are controlling just one thing. They're controlling entire comps that have all been set up already to interact with the slider in this way. Um, this one, as with all of them, is meant to be used like less is more style, but every single one of them just in case you wanted to, uh, actually goes all the way to the full extent of what the effect can do. Um, not all of them go to 100, some are less than that, but they all go all the way to the end so you can totally bone yourself if you want to, or you can make it really, really intense. Uh, but I, I recommend getting a, a flavor of it and um, just using it as a less is more sort of thing, because when you start stacking them together, it really goes a long way fast. But that's what that does. Chroma Scan, look in the bottom right corner of the screen here. Chroma Scan is one of these guys, just basically a, an RGB phase that does actually phase in frequency with VHS footage. Nice. And that should be kept down to a minimal. Uh, and Chroma Base is a very similar thing, but it's basically just a regional wash, which is something that showed up a lot in the reference I was using. I've used VHS plugins before and had some success with them, kind of, but I've never found one that I like that does everything that I want it to do. Uh, oftentimes, those effects, especially the ones that come with basic editing packages, do either a little bit of weirdo distortion or add scan lines or something. And going through all the reference for the VHS stuff that I was looking for when I was building this, I was startled to find that there's like 10 different things that VHS does intermittently in different ways, in different amounts. Sometimes some of them don't even show up. 
um, but they're certainly not limited to a basic distortion or scan lines. Um, so this is all based off of reference that I found, and one of the things that I saw a lot of was this wacky sort of regional color wash. Um, again, less is more. Uh, just a little hair of it will be enough that you can notice it as it's playing, but it'll be sort of subtle, you can kind of tell, uh, which is totally what we're going for here. That plus a little bit of that chroma scan, and now we're really off to the races in terms of making previously nice footage look like really shitty footage. Uh, chromatic aberration at a diagonal was something that I saw quite a bit. Just a little bit of that. I mean, just a hair. Because you can see that as we start tacking these things on top of each other, the effect is gaining momentum quite a bit. Um, chroma stripe is one of these guys, which I actually usually associate with film. Uh, but it was there in the reference I was looking at, so we got one of those as well. Uh, you can control its animation if you want to in the comp. I've actually, even though I built it to have sort of useful generic animation and then be totally controllable beyond that, I've never actually done that because it's always so dim uh, in my comps. Um, I never really have any need to specifically tell it what to do and not to do. But just a little bit of that goes a long way. Like, that's even too much. And all of these are set ups individually because they interact in different ways on different pieces of footage, and you want to be able to have control over them. There we go. Now we're getting somewhere. Now, visible noise scattering is the first implementation of three uh, re with regards to that pre-render that I showed you. Uh, this one basically adds your sort of prototypical tracking wobbliness to the tape, um, and it only does it in terms of color and light dark. It doesn't do any distortion. It doesn't actually interact with the pixels below it. It's just something that's put on top. Uh, and I tend to use, you know, maybe not so much of this, but if you wanted to use a lot of it in some places and a little bit elsewhere, you can totally pull up the uh, distortion pattern comp and the white areas will receive the distortion. Uh, and it runs both the visible noise scattering, which is what we were just looking at, and also the distortion amount, which is based off of the exact same map for the data and also the same mat for where it shows up. Uh, so if you crank this, wherever there is heavy distortion in the image, in the visible noise scattering, there will be heavy distortion in the um, distortion, uh, blah, blah, blah. Uh, again, less is more. And one thing about this is that when you do it, it really screws up your left edge there. And if I was, if I was any sort of a thoughtful person, I would have made it easier for you to get rid of that. Oh, never mind. Distortion edge allowance does exactly that. I found that when I really want to get crazy with the distortion, it looks kind of cool sometimes, but it never looks cool to have that thing going off on the side. So dial that in to where you want it. And my distortion amount, yeah, right about there. Cool. Now let's bring back up our gnarly scan. I turned that down a little while ago. Put it back up around here. And it's not bad. Uh, one of the other ones is fog opacity. Fog opacity gives it the most common thing I saw in VHS. Uh, it is an incredibly simple effect, but it is an incredibly ubiquitous one when it comes to looking at old footage that's been totally demagnetized. And that is, it just softens the ever-living hell out of the footage. Uh, to, I, I would say never go above 30, uh, but if you, if you do, you know, I guess to taste, your mileage may vary. But I found that almost never was any of the VHS footage as crisp as it should be. And we're talking about really old, crappy VHS footage here, but something like that really goes a long way. It's a big part of it. Um, another interesting thing about working with, in this case, I was working with mini DV footage. Uh, you might not be, but if you are, uh, one of the things that I've seen a lot is this really chunky, awful aliasing, along with a little bit of a chroma shift and the sort of built-in chip sharpening effect. Uh, it's just, and it, it, it it looks like crap, uh, and it collects the light on a highlight in a really digital-looking way, and I wanted to figure out a way to solve that problem. There's a lot of great magic bullet can do stuff like this, but for stuff that will do this inside of After Effects, there's not actually a lot of blurs that want to do that. So it took a bit of finagling to figure out the solution for it, but I finally got one that works pretty well, which you can use or completely turn off if you're not having this problem. It's up to you. But what I have set up here is what I call the highlight gag bias which goes from light to dark, biasing towards whatever the background color is. Like right now, it's sort of a gray color back here. I mean, it should be black, but it's not. Uh, it, so I, I kind of keep it in the middle. If it was fully white, uh, it would be set up better for a white background. And if I go fully dark, 
it's just a little bit too fuzzy here. But you can slide that to basically, you're chunking out all of the, and I did say chunking, you're chunking out all of the stuff that's really chunky and gnarly and, and gross on the edges. Uh, and if you wanted to, you could just go into the actual Lose DV Highlights comp and just put your footage on top of that, um, but whatever. It doesn't actually tend to hurt anything when it's there, so that's fine. And um, yeah, now we're getting somewhere. Now we got something that looks really crappy in VHS. -y. I guess one last thing that would be really useful. I didn't build this into the comp. I could have, and I decided not to. Uh, but add some grain. Go ahead and add some grain if you want. Um, it's such a CPU intensive thing that I didn't want to throw it into the comp cart launch. Um, because if you don't need it, it's just a waste of processor intensity. But I found that in most of the reference, VHS wants to be kind of big. It wants the size to be like on the two to three sort of side of things, like rather large, and then very low intensity. Something maybe 0.4. Yeah, okay. 0.28. Yeah, that's better. And uh, if you wanted to be super nuts, and I'm not recommending that you be super nuts, but if you wanted to, add a smaller one on top of that. And it doubles up in a very VHS-y way, based on what I was able to see. Go to 0.7. Yeah. And now we're just going to lower those values both. So we'll basically cut them in half. How about 0.16 and 0.25. And that really, <laughs> see, that really shows up in the VHS stuff. Um, like, here it is without grain. Here it is with. And then back over here, if we load up a preview, we can see everything that's happening all at once here. We've got uh, the fog, which is sort of demagnetizing it in general. The gag bias is set up. Uh, wouldn't hurt you too much if you didn't need it but had it on. But if you do have NTSC footage and it is doing that awful, uh, you know, <laughs> like the, the edge sharpening Photoshop thing, um, yeah, that's one way to control for that. Visible noise scattering is the wonkiness and the tracking wobbliness on the right and left side, which can be controlled in that matte comp if you want to. Chroma stripe is the dancing stripe. Chromatic aberration is what chromatic aberration is. Chroma base is that big regional swab at the bottom right. Scan, color, uh, the chroma scan is these, you can see them really clear on the punching bag, phasing RGB blurs. Uh, distortion amount is to what degree the noise is affecting the footage. Uh, distortion edge allowance is how soft the edge is, how much of the noise gets to go over it and how much doesn't. And then gnarly scan is the thing that you dump on top of everything. Let's take your nice pristine uh, mini DV footage and make it look like this. Not bad, huh? Now, all of these are set up with sliders, which means that if you do sort of what I've done in this actual piece of footage and do like a string out of multiple clips at once, like here's his next shot. Oh, and this is a perfect example of the, uh, the what the bias does. See right now, let's put it over here. Oh, come on. There we go. So that's pretty much what the original footage looked like. But if you put it all the way over to the white, it just takes out the worst offenders of all the chunkiness and the uh, the internal chroma shift and gives us the full control of the effect back. But anyway, um, what you do is you can, you know, just let's see, go to the uh, first shot here and come on keyframes for all these guys. Oh, I didn't know you couldn't select all and then turn all the keyframes on at once. Could have sworn you can do that. Anyway, uh, so, you know, and then you hit U to show all your keyframes, you know. Uh, and then just go to the first shot, or the first frame, of your uh, next shot. I mean, this is basic After Effects stuff, but it's something I ended up doing a lot on this show. Hit the do. Yeah, frame one. And then make all your changes. Like so. This should be, looks rather fuzzy. Let's have a little bit less of the scattering on this one. Maybe... Just a hair of that. You could get away with a bit more chroma stripe based on the color there. 
become a base is really going to show up because he's white. So I'll be careful about that. And the scan. Yeah. Up there. Distortion amount. Now let's have some more on this one. And then the edge allowance should come all the way in. Add a bit more of the amount and scan. And uh, in the fog, right? That. And my gag bias all the way to light. Do I have that set on light over here? Yeah, okay. And then I just, uh, you know, select all of my keyframes there. And uh, once they're all set to toggle, it'll just click over to that on the next shot. And it gives me uh, everything that I need. You, you got what I need. Anyway, but there's the, the uh, rather comprehensive VHS setup that I ended up coming up with for the show, and I wanted to share with everyone because I was so pleased with the results. And even if you don't use them as, as they are here, uh, if you wanted to expand on them, this is A, a great place to start, and B, I would really love to get back whatever changes you make or whatever notes you have, because this is something that I made for myself to use on one project, but, you know, I wanted to put it out there. It's certainly, uh, it, there's certainly room for improvement on it. It could be better in any number of ways, but... Uh, I'd be really interested to hear what changes you have for it or, or how you use it or if anything gets better or worse or if you found a bug or something like that. Um, this project is free to use. Um, I would appreciate someone giving me a shout out somewhere in the project, you know, a special thanks or something, uh, but that's not necessary. Think of it, you know, Radiohead asks you to give you what, to give money what you want. I just ask you to credit as you want, but uh, otherwise it's totally freeware. Uh, and I hope that your results, um, please you better than the uh, plugins that you might have seen before uh, that I'm not super psyched about. So there's my uh, crappy VHS look in After Effects CS6. Happy comping.